Hey guys, and it's finally time for me to do that balance prediction, and I'm also doing this video live. So we got a lot to talk about. This video is going to be long as all hell. It's going to be not only a ban list prediction, but also a debate, and we're going to steadily form the ban list. So if this video is super long, I do apologize. But we're going to go down all the cards. We're going to try to get in the mind of Konami, where, you know, they want to hit cards, and they want to slow down the game, yet they're not afraid to, you know, make some money. And that's definitely what we feel is Konami's going to, intense going to be. So let's go ahead and start with the top three decks in the format. And we're going to start with hitting number one, Mermels. All right. So... Mr. Ryan, how do you think this deck will be hit? Honestly, I can see Steve's getting hit and Sphere getting hit. I've seen uh, a lot of people bitch about Lind. Why? Because apparently she breaks a lot of plays. Well, when she, how, how does she happen? Well, there's this, and then there's this. Yeah, I definitely agree. Lind is only as good as the cards that can grab her. Vistia searches for her, Sphere gets her from the deck. Without these two, Lind would only be as good as what? A Mystic Tomato? It yeah, really, doesn't even, it really doesn't even warrant a hit. The Mermel Monster is summoned, doesn't even get its effect. So it's not like if you summon a Bissius, you get to search, or if you summon a Megalo, you get to, uh, you know, add a, a Bist Sphere. So it, Lind doesn't warrant it. What the real hit is definitely Abyssius. Abyssius is definitely one of the key cards and the key play. And in my opinion, the best one. People are yeah. saying like hit Megalo, but Abyssius is the one that puts in the work. He he repays you back for that cost that you pitch. He searches that level four lower mermel monster and he can add you gunned, which Intel will give you more searching. Yep. It's so. this thing I when I use it, it's I hope when I when I play, sometimes I don't even see Steve's. When I see Steve's, <laughs> I, I you know I, I, I just get happy when I see Steve's. Because it's like, oh, I'm gonna pitch this, I'm gonna summon you, oh, I'm gonna get a recycle from the deck, add it to hand. So that's already thinning the deck. And on top of that, it's adding ammo for whatever the next is gonna come next, which usually is a megalo or title or whatever's gonna combine with them and just make that seven for no reason. Like you can just do you, this in a fog king and bam, you gotta do You zero out. out with this guy. You zero out. You pitch, you summon, you search. Zero. Megalo, you pitch two. So depending on what you pitch, unless you pitch <laughs> and a dragon. Grab a sphere. Yeah, and grab a sphere. So and grab you, a sphere for with your, it. So for your two card cost, you get rewarded one trap card. One card and a monster who will probably get bottomless can get warning, and if you warning, it's like, oh well. No. Or debunked. Yeah, uh, debunk uh, says <laughs> hi to Megalo's face too. Now, putting Abyssius down to one, I feel is not hard enough hit for Mermels. Now, people forget that Mermels have been here before Dragon Rulers and after Dragon Rulers. Yep. And I, I even said it on the previous ban list. I was like, I saw it and I was like, wow, Mermels didn't get touched. Wow, we're gonna be drowning. And and we were. They, they did really well this format. Yep, this format, last format, they were, eh, they were there, but they, they had weren't. a bad dragon matchup. Yeah, they had just had horrible matchups, but I mean, in, in the general sense, Mermels are good. Um, if hitting Sphere and Steve's would calm them down even more, I'm actually probably all for it at this point. I mean, it's, but, not, it's not earning Konami any money at this point. Actually, it can't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just everyone wants a secret shiny Megalos. Other than that, everyone gets like, yeah, you got yeah. Battle Pack Megalos? I mean, yeah. look, after Konami's angle, we can't have this Mermel deck, this Mermel Atlantean deck, be more powerful than the stuff they're trying to I believe to the question money. is, are they coming out with more support? No. Nope. And is it no. time? No. To say they need to stop being so powerful and even them out. It is time. It is time for Mermels to stop being powerful. It's like Spellbooks. Spellbooks like are only as good as Fate. And Fate, since Fate got hit, it actually made Spellbooks okay. fall I mean, down the list. I mean, we, I know. some Spellbooks are still relative, but they, 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 they not... They don't really do anything this format. They right. They're done. slow. They have consistency issues. Uh, you know, they're one-play combo. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about Mermels. Like I said, Mermels were the top deck before even Dragon Rulers came out. We kind of forgot about them because, you know, we're all mad, mad about dragons. But now, since dragons are gone, it's time to, you know, hit this. The one time we, when we could have had shared right, and it would have been amazing. Yeah. And they give it to us two <laughs> formats too late. <laughs> so, we predict Abyssus to one and Abyss to two. We feel like that will be the definite hit. All right. All right, next deck. Move on to the next deck. Deck number two. Gigia Katakuri. Get that fucking shit out of here. Just <laughs> seeing that crap. All right, Gigia Katakuri has also been existing for a long time. Not really making Konami money. The, gear, the Katakuri angle of it. Uh, uh, so we're not be surprised if Katakuri angles it. 
uh, we do know that that Gear Gear structure deck is coming in the future. Uh, we apologize, we do not have a Gear Gear Gear. That's probably what you guys are saying, like, where's Gear Gear Gear? Gear 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 needs to be hit! It needs to be hit! Yeah, we understand. Uh, and we're gonna go with, I'm gonna go with set precedence. If we're going to go ahead and put a Bisphere to two, and this card pretty much does the same result in set precedence of Summon Rock, who also summons from the deck, I feel that Gear 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 should also go down to two. While also putting Burray to one, because Burray is the one that definitely causes the OTKs, the multiple Burrays, is definitely the thing. If we put the Burray to one, which they've already reprinted, made all their money off of it, they're pretty much done with Karakuri. <coughs> Gear Gear, they still got a little bit more, but kind of curry aspect, they're pretty much done with it. So it's, hitting Burray would definitely be uh, a good choice. Yeah, what's making this whole Karakuri bullshit more, you know, ridiculous is this card in general. I'm going to summon multiple Z's, bounce them back, summon new ones, keep sinking, and recycle at the same time. That's, that's, that's let's, yes. Let's not forget the Gen X Alley Birdman. Oh, yeah, I'll no, guess. No, that's why. That's why it's that, like, oh, I'm going to bounce this, summon Birdman, and bring this out, and then sink into one of these douchebags. No, that is that needs to go. That this just needs to get hit. This should go to one because that's just the plays that this thing does. Plus the amount of I'm gonna recycle and it keeps coming back. People don't understand this thing is a pain in the rear. And it when is you see this rear. and you start seeing two to three, because I've seen a field of three of these with a beret is retarded. I'm sorry. That's just no. It needs to. It needs to go. It, it needs to get hit. It needs to be. They need to calm this deck down. It can still be played, but people just have to do something different. Which would be amazing, because everyone's still stuck on the same, let's play the same generic crap. You know, oh, it's, trust me. It's not yeah. like Yurgi Katakuri wasn't doing well when Dragon Rulers are... Yeah, know, they, they, were, they were actually hanging in there. They were like, under spell books, they were still hanging. It's just everyone wanted to make spell books and dragons. Mm -hmm. Just because they were like, oh, well, this is winning. These are hanging on by the skin of their nuts. But definitely, since those two decks are gone, it's time to hit these guys. Yeah, get rid of this. This is the, well, I think, I believe the most see, dominant, because it tops almost everything. Like, yeah. I know Fire Fist tops, but I see more of these. It's like, every top eight, it's like, oh, how many of these? Yeah. Why are we not surprised? You know, the reason why I'm afraid of this card is because this structure deck. Like, if the structure deck wasn't, you know, confirmed or anything, I'd definitely be like, oh, yeah, hit Accelerate. But I'm not sure how Konami wants to do it. If we hit Acceler Accelerator too early, then it might not promote the structure deck. I don't know if it'll if it's not going to promote the structure deck. It's the fact they still have MK2 and all that other crap. It's like summon, summon, summon. This is the only thing that just makes those retarded, ridiculous plays. Like we're not supposed to. Like I Konami doesn't Konami, like that kind of But Konami thing. doesn't want to kill Gear Gear. That's they the big thing. G Angler is coming out. They want Gear Gear to do well. But yeah, Katakuri, that's what they don't care about. Yeah. Well, I, I think bullshit. Honestly, if anything in Gear Gear needs to get hit, it's this. They can keep accelerated at three, but this is the stupid part. This, I mean. Well, gear, gear, gear. No. Gear, 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 sorry. <laughs> gear, 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 is also a stupid car. Yeah, right? it's a stupid car, but I mean, when I was when I was just bursting it recently, the thing that really just set up the place was this. The gear, 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 yeah, he summoned the two, and it's just making one, and he was trying to make a GGX. I stopped that. This is so hard to stop, because it's like, oh, I summons one, okay, gets away with another, and then gets away with another, and then recycles, and gets away with it again. You can't, that's, that's stupid. That needs to get hit. But anything in gear, gear, this should be the one card get hit. It recycles, they do enough of it as it is, they don't need to keep doing it. I agree. I agree. I agree that it should be hit. Do I think Konami's going to do it? I don't. <laughs> uh, I don't. Know. I don't. I, I, don't. I, I, really I don't, don't see Konami hitting it. All right. So we're done discussing that one. On to the third best deck of the format. We are going to look at, what do you know, Fire Fists. Look at that bear. So we That's got an ulti bear, guys. So we got a few cards to talk about and... Uh, go ahead. And Here's down. the thing. Uh, people overlook the fact of how good Bear is. Good Bear is good. Bear, bear is good. Good. Bear Great. just oh my God, pops bear. a monster. Oh, on top of that, he gets the surge to grab this, which also opens up this to grab himself again. And then we got Wolf Bark. And then Rooster. Lo and behold, everyone says to hit these over these. Well, we already know Tanky's not going to hit because they're still trying to promote Bujins. But if they do hit it, they could put it to two, and it won't really kill everything. But it will slow the deck down a bit. But see, the reason I'm saying Bear can get hit, it can go to one, it can go to two. Honestly, I, it's it's played in multiple decks. Constellers, Glad Beasts, frickin' Bujins. Fire Fist run amok with this guy. They play three of them just because of the fact of how good he is. Oh, pop that monster swing, I'm going to get my search. Yeah. And then activate the search and grab another card. That's ridiculous. And then I hear people say, oh, Wolf Park is too OP. We need to ban him, restrict him to one. Like, not really. You know what sets him up? These two right here. Yeah. The same on the same side of Rooster. Yeah, like, what would Wolf Park do if Bear wasn't in the graveyard, all right? It's kind of like, hey, 
Yeah, you had a bear, but look, look who's coming to save the day. The thing is that Konami has money to make off of this wolf bark, but this wolf bark is making sales. This bear, well, not this particular bear because it's, uh, you know, an ultimate, right? But I mean, like, bear in general, the one in the tin, they're done selling bear. Bear has made its price. They could put bear to one and it wouldn't phase them in the slightest. Oh, sure, it, it, it you know, destroys plus one fire fist, like they care, you know? All they really care about is them Bujins, and Bujins play one bear, so that's all they really care about. Yep. So, I definitely do. The Cons thing is that... Constellers burn off that bear, too. They just want to, like, get the tanky search for the cost. Oh, I got bear. Let's just start using it as fodder and, and pop crap. And I know, because usually <coughs> put the bear to two, I run two bears on my Constellers, and he's still good. He, he And Constellers... And he's still good. All I got is tankies and my two bears, and he'd be putting in work. So, putting it to one, you still got that one-time play, and that's and pretty much it. I mean, I mean, if you're really desperate, you can still run call, but Bear has earned his spot on the list, and definitely at one, in my opinion. Well, we do have his little brother, too, is Gorilla. I mean, if Bear I mean, gets gorilla's, gorilla's not going to get hit. Gorilla's, no, gorilla's we're not saying Gorilla's going to get hit. It's saying if Bear gets hit, then everyone will just cycle in. Let's get the Gorillas. Because Gorilla is so. Bear's little Bear's little brother. So. I think that if Bear gets hit to one, the plus one Fire Fist that will be dead, oh, no, people no, no. will go back to four acts in which Dragon can revive the Bear. Yeah, well, I mean, what I'm saying is if Bear gets hit, they'll... Everyone's just gonna plus the three off Gorilla because Gorilla can, is also able to search the tanky. The problem is he has to kill the monster himself. But the so, problem is, is that he can't destroy a monster like Bear. That's what makes Bear no, I, a I know. whole another level thing. But, no, but what, what I'm saying is, if Bear gets hit, then everyone will just play three Gorillas. So, because so they can keep the consistency of grabbing the tanky. The thing <laughs> is that slows them down because Bear just pops swing. No, Gorilla has to, can only do back row, which, yeah, it clears, but not always Gorilla can kill everything. You're right. Gorilla's only 1600 stick. I mean, look at Gear Gear armor. That's a 1900 wall, and if you're playing Gear Gear, you know that's going to be Gear Gear armor. You're going to, do you want to swing into that? No, because they'll flip and search. Exactly. Do you want to, do you want to take the chance? Because I've seen some of them play MK2 face down, some stupid crap, to flip summon. Okay, Gorilla, I mean, you have to take chances on it. Bear just eliminates, a, you know, just takes a gun and shoots the guy and moves on. All right, and why is Rooster here? Rooster's here is because a lot of people are saying it's the same story with Wolf Bark. Um, when it comes to Rooster, everyone's like, oh, we'll hit Horse Prince going to no, this, no, and then no, Horse Prince get no. you know, Fire Fist Rooster, and Rooster starts busting up more plays to grab a tanky from the deck by recycling something else to say, screw it. Yeah. And the thing mm -hmm. is, it's Rooster's not even that bad. I mean, I see so many people say, oh, Rooster's broken, Wolf Bark's broken. No, the Rooster? guy who sets up everything is right here. Bear is the, the, the He's the center Rooster? of every of uh, 3.5, four axes, and... Plus, uh, one. plus one. He's the center. Rooster has no center. If Rooster was level four, I could see it, but Rooster has no energy being a level three in this four format. You know, you four axis, bear four, plus one, bear four with the wolf bar. What, what is what is Rooster? Which is 3.5. Oh, okay. But see, there's three axes, but see, they also play Bear to grab this and uh, go into that crap, and then Rooster gets cycled in. I'm just saying. Bear is the center of the deck. He's the Bear center of any of the three deck. decks. He's the center of the decks. Maybe not in 3.5, but he's still used in twos to threes in 3.5, which is ridiculous to grab a tanky, to set up Rooster plays, and Horse Prince plays, and, and all that. Wolf Bark gets set up, but this guy is the center of it. We can see Bear getting hit one. I can see him going to one. If he goes to one. two... Then he's still good. He's, he's still not. Good. He's not. It's just wow. Your hand won't get flooded with bears, because in some of my games, I get bears for days, and it's like I don't need all these bears. But at one, that that is where I see definitely I see bear. Yeah, and I think that's a decent enough fire fist hit. I think that'd be the end of well, no, the close to the it, end it of plus one. It, it won't. Yeah, it'll just say it'll stop. We, plus we avoid ones. hitting tanky, so you can still promote them bujins. I, I don't know. You can still make money off of wolf bar. Wolf bar grabs a. Fire Fist for level four. Fire beat Beast Warrior? Okay. Yeah. So it's, and the thing I look at Wolf Bark is he's going to be handy down the road, because who knows, these guys aren't going to be the only Fire Fist, you know, I mean, Beast Warrior fires. I mean, Fire Kings play him. Yeah, Fire Kings do play him. So, it's, it's, that's still money to be made. So Wolf Bark, he's still a pretty penny, but Bear, he's yeah. pretty much exhausted his, his, his cause, and I definitely think that he can go down to one. Yeah. All right. Don't worry, guys. We're going to review everything at the end, because, you know. All right. Next deck, which I know some people are screaming about. You know, what, you know, the Dragon Ruler's new babies that they ran to, Heretics? Oh, yeah. I think they're just bad that they can't beat it. All right. I think that this is going to go down to one. To, to stop that to stop that Dragon Ruler crap, this would be the one thing. Is that just like, I, like, out of all the decks that I've, you know, done research on, I'm not 
too keen on heretics yet, you know. I'm kind of like, eh, I see it, and, uh, you know, setting precedents, I know that Konami is not afraid to hit a card that's already been on the list. This card has been at two. But the thing with our Konami, and this is Konami America, is that when it comes to decks that they don't want to promote anymore, they'll hit it. They, what, what did they do to Dragoonities? They banned it just because Dragoonities were kind of holding the Dragon Rules. Then you guys wanted to run and play the Dragon Rules in this Heritage deck, and now look what they got to do. Now they're going to hit this seal, and they're not, and they're not going to have any regrets with it. You know what? Here's, here's the thing I say, is stop trying to abuse Dragon Rulers, quit being bad and following every Dragon Ruler trying to break a deck just so you can make a Draco Sack or a Big Eye. Move on, there's better decks coming out. Definitely. So. I mean, right now, you've already got a lot of Dragoonity players hating people who play Dragon Rulers for the f fact, and now it's gonna, and now if Heretic Rulers get hit, it's screw, it's screwing the deck over. It's gonna screw the deck over. You know, let's just keep killing off themes that we're trying to, and it's not even doing that well, and everybody, and it's just, it's stupid. Yeah. But I do agree, hit this so we can just call it a day, get rid of the goddamn Dragon Rulers, they're supposed to be support, not base another deck around, that's stupid. Exactly. Because definitely that's not something Konami wants to do, is hit these decks, the top three decks, and then... Have this, fine, in key. This deck, you know how this deck does. It, it tries to OTK or bust. And that's definitely what, not what Konami wants to do. Konami, our Konami, wants to slow down the game. And definitely hitting this down to one would definitely slow down the game, lower the deck's consistency, which is a key thing that Konami does when hitting decks. And of course, this card has previously been on the list. Heretics do have a real good consistency now that everybody's playing Seal, and it's not like Seal's doing anything. Mm -hmm. Seal's that one, the one time the Seal actually does something because no one expected it and they're like oh we ain't gonna hit that no one knows the MST a, a heretic seal right. and now everybody's aware of it it's like oh well now it's that but yeah let's lower the deck consistency let's put this card down to one all right next thing we're gonna talk about because you know that we got to talk about it Hobbiting. Speaking of deck consistency, get this out of here. Uh, don't we don't crap. have a Reckless, but Reckless should be here too. I say is that this whole Hobbiting thing is losing Konami a lot of money. This is earning nothing. This is replacing six cards in the deck that Konami is losing money on. It's speeding up the consistency of decks, and it's just really hurting the speed of the game. Now, I'm saying that these cards can go should go down to one, and you're probably thinking, like, what? Why would we put these cards down to one? No, they can't go down to one. They've never been at one. Check Banless oh. History. Guys, go ahead. Pause the video. Go go into Google. Type in Yu-Gi-Oh! Banless History. Both of these cards, well, you know, Reckless, have been at one at the same damn time. Yeah. And it was back in, what, about ten years ago? It was back when uh, Chaos Emperor Dragon decided to make a, an appearance. People made Upstart Goblins and Reckless Greeds as fast as possible, because it was basically whoever got to that Chaos Emperor Dragon first was pretty much the winner. Or BLS. I mean, come on, we had Demon, BLS, that, right, Geki. We had the brokest format ever. And just putting those in... Because, because we can. We had the most overpowered cards. They hit those. But since then, they started creeping these back up because people think, oh, we're going to do the same thing. But now that we're not, but now someone decides to top with this, and I think it's retarded that everybody's just going to follow a fad and be like, oh, well, minus is, you know what? You know what my experience with this is? I'm glad to take that life points because you want to know why? The game's not always about how fast can you kill somebody with it. It's... Can you control the field? Because you'll take the damage anyways. You know, it's like, oh, Hobening. Hobin came up with that. Hobening. Yeah. No, yeah, he did that, not. That was done 10 years ago. Hobening so, no. did not start this. You know what started this? When people were smarter to think about these cards, did not care about life points, because back then, the big beaters were the Chaos Monsters themselves. They will win you the game. <laughs> Those won the game. You want to play three of these and all, and Reckless Squeeze as long as I got a Chaos Super Dragon? I do not give a fuck. It goes back to that general... Exactly. Advantage over life points. Yeah, it's basically right now this format is advantage over life points. It doesn't matter. You know, it's gonna set precedence. Just like Gold Sarcophagus. In this card, Gold Sarcophagus, it was at three, then it went to one, then it went to two, then it went to three, and then we put it back down to one, so we're gonna do the same thing with these two cards. Yep, because they were trying to hit, you know, trying to slow down Dragon Moves, not kill him, but they were trying to make the card useful in other, in other decks. No. Here's, a, here's the thing to think about, though. If they take Reckless Greed and put it down to one, no one's gonna want to play it now. Okay, that's, that's, what, that's the point. That's the point. That's the point. That's they, need to, they need to hit these for the sheer fact of... Here's the thing. I look at it this way. As many of you guys guys want to play Upstar Goblin and Reckless Greed, all it's doing is, Reckless Greed is probably the more pain in the rear one, but Upstar Goblin, I look at it this way, okay, it's one card to, when I already have back row, okay, you're just speeding up your deck to so basically the answer that I would probably counter anyways. I don't know what anybody thinks about this, that everyone's so over the guy with, who enjoys pizza. I mean, come on, everybody enjoys pizza, but it's like, 
too Listen, much. I, mean, I, I, I don't it. see any reason to. My question is, to guys out there that are playing with Upstart Goblin, what's the three cards you're taking out? And uh, no, they're like 37 card deck. Really? It's not a 37 card deck. What you're doing is you're taking out three defensive right, cards like, is, to increase to you can get to a combo that will most likely get countered because a four uh, fire fists have so much back row that it doesn't matter what you do. I enjoy the fact that you upstart or you reckless because then it says like I will play solemn warning on your counter. Oh, you're gonna start the combo. Okay, Phoenix Chain. Oh, Baylor, I have answers. Torrential. Almost every deck runs the same yeah. trash. I mean, just say, because uh, the, there are three cards you could put in there that are better than that that can help you stall, help you defend, yeah. like, help yeah. you put monsters on your opponent's side I mean, to the graveyard I, I or get, banish I them. I get upstart. You Why? put upstart, you give your opponent 1,000 life points, you draw a card, so you even out. But yep. Reckless, that's a neg. You it's play a, Reckless, you draw two, but then you you got to hope that you top all three. No, you know, you know what my thing is? If you play Reckless... You better hope that you control the game because I've seen tons of people do reckless, draw two, and then the duel gets flipped around and now they can't draw. So not only are they losing, but then they can't draw into anything. Here's, to my, save them. here's my example of what reckless greed is it's taking a loan out and hoping that your loan does something. Say you're going to invest in a business. If the business fails, well, that's reckless greed for you. Yep. So definitely I can see these cards going not to one. Called, right? not, no, not, I don't see these cards going to one. Back to one. <laughs> No, it just needs to go to one so people can just start being original and come up with their own crap. But that's again. what I'm saying. Not to one, yeah. but back it's to just one. Get, that, to get that stuff out of here. All right, another deck that has been doing fairly well. Harpies. Explain this one, because I know a Party party's good, but it's like, if you MST it, it just blows them all up. Uh, but I well, know it, it consistently spams the field. Yeah. It's like, you're, it, you're wasting the, so the much thing, The thing with MST effort. is that the evidence of absence, it's not the absence of evidence. All right, you guys knew that I was going to say it in this video. Yeah. Just because it can be stopped with MST doesn't mean that you'll always have the MST. Mm -hmm. Now, I think I definitely think that Harpies deserve a hit, but we don't want to hit the consistency of the deck because if we hit the consistency of the deck, the deck is dead. It already has yeah. consistency issues. I'm going off a set precedence in which any of these spam summon cards, Konami generally puts down to one. Uh -huh. Look at Ultimate Offering, look at Return, and Harpies are just like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, the deck doesn't necessarily need his third party to be a three. But it's it'll be fine. It'll be that one card where you, you play it, you go for the OTK, you got it, good job, you know, GG. So you'd say just semi-limited, right? The I, thing with semi-limited is because the deck is still really good at two. Personally, in my harpies, I would run two because at three, this deck this card clogs. So even at two, the, the card is really good. But at one, setting pre precedence, I think that it's perfectly fine at one, and we'll see what it does. Yeah, I can see because it's like, you know, why, you know, because then it just makes you not want to be reckless with it. Be conservative, and if you have board control, it's, you know, it's like that. The problem is that the deck hasn't been topping as much as I was expecting it to. The majority of the time that I see this deck top is because I see the deck pro and there are like three mistakes because the deck doesn't search that much. The deck is definitely good because not only does it not search as much, but it's very difficult to side out against. Yeah. Due to the fail spell at the party, the summoning, the popping, it definitely has a hard time against uh, Harpies. So, you know, we're not killing the deck, definitely not. Putting party down to one won't kill the deck. The deck will still be a great contender uh, for next format. And I definitely see if we put in party down to one, you can still be great. You know, we're just going to keep your channel at three, we're going to keep your signs at three, your elegant ego to three. But definitely, you guys better be careful if we do this because if you continue to be, because, you know, we're taking down the top decks. You, you're like two point, you're like 1.5. You top, but you're just not beating these top, you know, these top three decks. So, we're going to put your party down to one after set precedence of ultimate offering and return, and we're going to see what you're going to do. Alright, uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to a card that, for some odd reason, for some odd reason, is at three, and it shouldn't be at three. No, no, there's no, I need Konami to explain this, alright. Skill Drain. I know, it looks cool, doesn't it? <laughs> That is I think that's what skill drain should look like. Should look like mom because mom's a bit. Uh, that mom's is a beast. The biggest misprint ever. <laughs> All right, skill drain at three is very, very unhealthy for the game. Skill drain hurts all uh, all <laughs> decks. Ninety percent of decks in Yu-Gi-Oh and all the decks that Konami's trying to promote. Bujins. It hurts Noble Knights. It hurts Sylvans. It hurts Honest, Majoches. Honestly, <laughs> I don't see why Skill Drain wasn't hit with Soul Drain. Soul Drain is, I mean, Skill Drain is so much worse than Soul Drain, yet Soul Drain got hit and Skill Drain was left alone. I mean, S Skill Drain 
hits everything. It's mm. stupid. It's like to play around this is hard. But Steel Drain, Steel Drain is just crushing and hurting every single deck that Konami is trying to promote. This card is losing Konami money. As soon as, as, soon as a Dark World player using Steel Drain beats a Bujin, Konami just lost some money. <laughs> Steel Drain, go down to one. Follow your brother. Follow your brother with Soul Drain. You know, I mean, having Soul Drain, I'm not. I even see people's like Soul Drain prediction. or Raviel. You know, I see people uh, with their ban list predictions, and they're all like, "Oh, um, Macro can go back up to two, and Dimensional Figures can go back to two, and Soldier can go to three. No, they're fine at one. They are bad, also bad for the game, oh, so they yeah. should stay at one. Therefore, Skill Drain, follow your brothers. You're bad for the game, but you will keep you as one as a nice, you know, top deck side deck card. You can stay at one, but that's it, not three. This Those, is just, ugh. all right. So, all right, this next deck has been boggling my mind for a cool man. We're going to talk about Infernities. Oh Infernities my god. have been talking, and, and everybody feels it. Everybody hates Infernities. Even the only people that don't hate Infernities are Infernity players. Everybody else is just like, you're a dish. Well, I, you have three Solemn Judgments when I have none. <laughs> yeah, basically. Three I, searchable Solemn <coughs> Judgments. My whole thing with Infernities is that, that whole entire, when they designed that R-Type, was probably good on paper, but the problem with, problem with that deck is it promotes cheating. Yeah. And uh, and here's how I see, and this is how I see it. You know, for people who haven't versed, the you know, people cheating in this deck. I mean, some people even cheated in Bubble Beat so they can play a Bubble Man by setting monsters. Infernity players, they did it all the time. Like if you uh, caught them, if here's the thing, if you catch an MST and you hit the monster, they'll scoop right there because they'll be like, okay, scoop. Yep. Yeah, because they know that they're gonna yeah, get. Yeah, but they won't let you. But see, the thing is, they'll scoop, but they won't. But you know how they cheat and get away with it is they'll scoop really fast so you can't see what you've MST'd yeah. and then they'll say what did I MST and they'll be like just pull out a spell or trap yeah they'll be just they, like they, I, they, I you know nothing. that's why that kind of that kind of game style is not healthy for any card game because that promotes so much cheating unless it's like Pokemon you can't get away with setting anything it's just like that's one game you can't get away with mm. setting stuff but Infernities in general, that deck just needs to just be done, Dead. hashed out. We already have the new one, Artifacts, coming out, and that's just a, that's going to be a pain in the rear. That's already an opinion. Yeah, that's now, another discussion. Yes, we do like, have Barry yes. here, but this is our only opinion. But the card that I really want to point fingers at is actually Archfiend. Yep. The reason why I don't want to hit Barrier is because I don't want to set precedence for Gravekeepers. Konami wants to promote Gravekeepers, in which if we hit Barrier, then people are going to be like, well, then Tomb should go down to one, too, and that will hurt the promotion. I have Tomb. Oh, well, that's fine. It's it's not that we need Tomb to one, it's the fact that, that we don't want to put this to one. And definitely, this card is just as good as Tomb. They know they each have their own ways and, uh, you know, conditions for activating it. So that was but, to broke. But, but, no, but the, what's the difference between this and Tomb? What's the difference? This is searchable. Oh, yeah. Through Archfiend. Gravekeepers, the only thing they can do to get their tombs back is... Right. Well, they, well, it's not they even drawing get, it. They can recycle it from Graveyard. They can graveyard. recycle yeah, it from sure. the Graveyard. But, but that's but it. Can, you know, you like, know. And yes, Konami has ruled, no, you cannot commander in two tomb. No. It says get a Necro Valley. Not a Necro Valley card, like the one that gets it from the Graveyard does. But How did people what, get that one wrong? I don't know. They're just like, it has Necro Valley in the name. You know how people are. People are stupid. So definitely, I think that we should hit it's the first time I heard Archfiend. That one. Archfiend is definitely power. Is is the deck Archfiend? You summon him from the graveyard with Necromancer. Search. You top deck him. Special summon him. Search. You get summon him with Launcher. Search. You copy. You you go hundred eyes. Banish a, a Necromancer. Then Necromancer's effect. The hundred eyes copies. Summon Archfiend. Search. You call the haunted. Search. It's Archfiend, and just because you can search this Solemn Judgment with Archfiend is definitely the reason why I think it should be the one to get hit, and not Barrier. Now, I think it should be hit, but I was kind of, you know, compl complexing my mind of whether it should go down to one, or it should just be outright banned. Now, the thing is, is that I was thinking, well, even if we put it down to one, you can just be like, okay, Armageddon I or Lava the Chain, send it to the grave, Necromancer, summon it back, and search, you know. It, at one, you still got it. So, in which case, if we straight up don't want this deck to be searching for their barriers anymore, then we should straight up ban it. But then that would probably kill the deck because you have to have an attack position monster to even use barrier, and there's no strong attack position monsters that friends have besides heart Dream. So, so that'd be good. So, I'm going to say we're going to have to go ahead and put it down to one. Set precedence of Hornet, where you got one. It's your play. It's your big, it's your playmaker. If that shit gets banished, then you're done. And of course, people are gonna banish you. So watch out. So it's a way to kill to kill the deck without having to set precedence on hitting gravekeepers. So I say our to one. Yeah. 
Alright guys, sorry about the jump there. Uh, pretty much, my phone ran out of room for the video, and then we recorded the second half of the video on my friend's phone, and his sound quality was crap. I, I think some of you guys might have seen me upload a video called uh, Pendulum Monster uh, a Discussion, and the sound quality was just bad. So we decided to uh, come back to Burger King and re-record uh, just, you know, just the second half of this. So um, apologize for the inconvenience. I really wanted to get it up on the first, but I uh, hope you guys are, you know, still good with me uploading it one day late. So, uh, Salt isn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, Mr. Ryan has changed clothes. He is the next day, but we are still at the Burger King. The Burger King. Uh, with we do not TV. have... With a fancy oh, TV. Look at that fancy TV. We're getting off topic. But... Uh, uh, we do not have a cameraman today, so I'm recording, so uh, you got to see me in the first half, but you probably won't be seeing me in the second half, apologize <laughs> about that, but I look stupid anyway, <laughs> so uh, we pretty much got through with almost all the cards, we only have one card left to talk about, and before you guys go ahead and flame us and dislike this video, the last card that we're going to pick as, uh, predict as the curveball of the ban list, go ahead, put it down, Rhoda guys, I know, hold up, hold up. We're saying that Rota is going to go up to two. All right, now think about it. What decks this format have even what, that are warriors have topped this format? Nothing. Oh, okay. Let's simplify it a little bit more. What decks that even use a warrior have topped? No Evil Storm. No Constellar. Oh, okay. But what deck is Konami definitely trying to promote and get money off of? And I checked. I went on Yu-Gi-Oh Wiki and I saw right there in Primal Origins more Noble Knight support, guys. So Noble Knights are going to get even more support. Now. As you saw, Konami wants to keep on pushing these Noble Knights, and despite them having their own Rota, they're still not doing it. So Konami is going to have to have these outside means to promote this deck. They want to make money off of this deck, so they're going to keep on doing it, and I can definitely see Rota going up to two just to promote Noble Knights. What do you think about this, Mr. Ryan? Honestly, I don't know if they'll put it to two. My whole thing on it is Konami made uh, land, the Synchro. Mm -hmm. He's basically the deck's Rota. It was not made for what the deck needed because they really did not need something like that. So I mean, I, I mean, it's possible for this to come to two, but they made the they made the synchro for that particular same reasons. So to, for this to come to two, I mean, that's like rolling dice at the freaking casinos. Right. I mean, I get that the synchro searches, but the whole thing is that the deck is not doing any. If the deck was topping and kicking butt, then we wouldn't even consider Rota blow up to two. But Konami would definitely take this card into consideration if they want to promote these Noble Knights, their new secret rare. You know, yeah. they push cards for spell books. they're probably going to do the same thing for Noble Knights, so I wouldn't be surprised if this card went up to two. I mean, it's not the first time that Konami has done something on the ban list just to, you know, make money. I mean, alright, I, I know I can't see you guys, but raise your hand. How many of you guys thought that Tenki was going to go down to what? I thought it was just going to stay to two, but I, I, me personally, I knew that that thing was not going to come back to three, and then all of a sudden it's like, nope, it's at three because we're trying to promote Bujins. Exactly. And I did take a little bit more, in between uh, the first part and the second part, I did go on Banless History and check and see what Roto was at, and as soon as Roto came out, it was at one. Yeah. Then it went to two for a, a couple formats, couple. It, yeah, the reason why I went to one at the start is because of Warrior Toolbox back in the day, because that deck alone was just stupid diverse. But then again, the game was so much slower and more paced that you can get away with summoning a Marauding Captain and not watch it die in the next turn. Oh, Marauding, oh, marauding Captain lot, too good. Yeah, Marauding Captain was great, but nowadays it's like, that stuff is just trash. Oh, now you have, like, Samurais or, you know, Noble Knights or Evil Swarms or stuff that's just like... We just choke him to death. And then, uh, so it went up to two for, I think, a couple of formats, and then it's been at one, and went back down to one, it's been at one since, and, you know, we've got we've been kind of in this mentality where a majority of us are like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And, you know, that's definitely how we get, where, you know, uh, Konami was like, hey, we should unban this, and we're like, no, no, Konami is too broke, it's too broke, and then they do it, and we're like, oh, okay, you know? As soon as we saw Magician of Faith, the good majority of people were like, oh my god, did this game go into shit? And then, what did Mag Magician of Faith do? Nothing. This game is so much different than what it used to be. Magician of Faith was abused back in the day. Like, it was just grab Ragaki, grab Harpy Spell Dust, or just grab whatever you needed for that situation. So it's like, technically having two of whatever you needed for that game. Exactly. But now it's just... No. Like I said, Rota, we can definitely see it coming up to two, and this is actually the last card on our list, so uh, before we end the video, we're going to go back down the list and uh, go ahead and, uh, if you, you guys know that the link isn't, I mean not the link, the 
description. Yeah, in the description is the list, but we're going to go ahead and just say it. We're going to show you what cards that we actually have, so uh, bear with us because we actually don't have all the cards. So we said limited to one, bear. Upstart Goblin Reckless, which we don't have, so because we don't do Hobbiting, so apologize about that. Um, Archfiend, which we don't have, but we'll signify by barrier. Uh, so Archfiend to one. Uh, Abyssius to one? Uh, no, yes. Yes. Abyssius to one. Abyssius to one. Uh, Hysteric Party to one, which we don't have, because neither of us have Harpies. Uh, Herotic Seal to one. And uh, Skill Drain to one. Which we don't have. Which we don't have, because we don't play Skull Drain and Beret to one. And limited to two, we have Abyss Sphere. Uh, Gear Gear Gear, which we do not have, because we don't play Gear Gears. And the last card being Rota. Alright guys, so that is the finale of the Banlist Prediction. Um, we are going to be doing a lot more live videos, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Go ahead and tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching, thank you guys for all the support, and I will see you guys on the actual April 2014 ban list.